Aloha. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit, and what I really wanted to do was to get some questions coming out of the audience, because sometimes the driving are chopped down this side, but everybody wanted to go down that side. So we'll give an opportunity for you to kind of steer the discussion uh, a little bit later. Uh, right now, <clears throat> um, I'm part of many, many different groups. And the reason I'm part of many, many different groups is because there are many, many different groups out there. And everybody's got their own idea about where they're going to go and how they're going to get there. And a lot of times there's conflicts between the groups. Even though we're heading for the same area, same target, there's always conflicts. So I've been asked many times exactly what group do you represent. And I, and I say I don't really represent any group but I'm part of a lot of different groups. And HAPA is one of those groups. HAPA is sort of a newer group, and it's different from some of the other groups that I'm involved with. I'm involved with all kinds of different groups, some really grassroots, and some that needs a lot of people and a lot of technology in order for them to operate. And sometimes it's good. Um, when you have a very complicated group, it's like trying to steer an aircraft carrier in a wall and when you need a speedboat. So sometimes you need those little speedboats to drive those guys crazy while you get the aircraft carrier out on the side and just runs over everybody. So I like the idea of having all of these different groups. The trick now is to try and figure out how to get all these different groups together. Right. <laughs> so everybody understands that dilemma. Um, easy to say, hard to do. So. It's starting to work though. Um, when I first started getting involved in communities, uh, it was because of an island called Kaha'olawe. And that was not anything that I had planned. It just happened. And out of that came an involvement in the community. And I did get involved in all kinds of stuff, and I'm still involved in all kinds of stuff. The other big event that I was surprised to be involved with was GMOs. And that was because the University of Hawaii decided that they were going to GMO the Hawaiian taro. And then, to make matters worse, they decided they were going to patent the thing and claim ownership. And then they were going to sell the seeds and the huli back to us. So that was like, whoa. So that got me involved in GMOs. And the problem with getting involved with GMOs was, was that when we came, became involved, I found myself like one of three or four Hawaiians with about 100, 200 Hapaulis in the room. So the GMOs started to get a bad rap, um, especially on the island of Maui when we started doing some organizing on Maui. That's where I first really got organized with GMO stuff was on Maui. And the council people, we were there testifying, and after all of the testimony, I would hear them talking. And you know, they would, they would say things like, wow, these guys are just off the boat, and they're here to tell us what's good for us. Who the hell do they think they are? Then when I'm on the street waving signs for GMOs, they're yelling at me, go back to America where you came from. You know, so I knew something was wrong with this whole picture. <laughs> so, Today we find ourselves getting more and more local people and Hawaiians waking up to the fact that it's not only you getting poisoned by food, but they're poisoning your land. And that's the thing that got Hawaiians more and more involved. Sure. Yes, you had no right to own our town. Yes, you had no right to modify our town. But you are not going to poison our land. So that's what's happening now in the Hawaiian community. There's a, there's a gradual shift towards exactly what you're eating, whether it's good or bad, or whether it's legal or non legal to the fact that our lands are being poisoned. And for us as Hawaiians, we have that kuleana, that responsibility to protect that land and hand it to the next generation in a better shape than we found it. That's something that we all have kuleana towards. So that is going on. So on the other side of the fence, uh, when I talk to the Hawaiians, and I talk to them about sovereignty, a 
picture goes in the head that we all dala dala, the Hawaiians are all dala dala, and we'll buy them a one way ticket back to the mainland. And, you know, it, like it freaks them out. This whole idea of Hawaiian sovereignty freaks them out. That somehow it's something bad. So I'm trying to go around and explain to the two sides that we're all on one canoe here. And that if we don't come together, both of us are going to lose. And it's simple politics. One and one is two. And if you got three guys, the two guys lose. So it's not very complicated. So the idea when I'm talking to Hawaiians is that number one, we got to get together. Okay? Easier said than done. Number two, that we need to sharpen our spears. We need to have some weapons. And the weapon is your vote. That's not easier said than done. That's almost impossible. But now you're telling people that understand their history, and you're talking to people that know what happened. Our generation, we didn't know what happened. When we were doing Kahololab, we didn't know there was an overthrow. That's how well the colonization was done. We took our educational system put things in there and left things out. So this generation that we're dealing with now, especially on Mao Kea, is a generation that went to charter schools, schools that taught them about their culture, about their history, about their language, all the way through up to the University of Hawaii system where they got their degrees and their doctorates. These are the leaders that are out there now. These are the leaders that are leading us as Hawaiians with Mauna Kea. And they have caught the fancy, they have caught the vision of the Hawaiian people. The Hawaiian people are now having something that has to do with truth and honor. And they're coming together. They're not separating and fighting with each other like the media is saying. Mauna Kea is bringing Hawaiians together. It's becoming a common vision. And it's not a vision of Hawaiians versus telescopes. That is not what is happening on Mauna Kea. It's a unifying factor that only comes once, I don't know how often, if at all. So our politicians, including the Office of Hawaiian Affairs, they're misreading this whole thing. Of what's going on in the Hawaiian community? So we have the Hawaiians coming together, okay? On the other side of the fence, we have GMO guys. And we had like, I don't know, 2,000, 3,000 marching on the streets. And we were going, yeah, we got organized. The problem is, the same problem we're having in the Hawaiian community. Most of them did not vote. So there's a missing element in all of this. And in the Hawaiian community, not only did they did not vote, but they cannot understand why you would go and enter into a system that is right. an illegal system that has been pushing you down, pushing you down, taking all of your resources, destroying all of your resources, and just getting richer and richer. They couldn't understand why you would participate in that system. So now we have a vision as Hawaiians. And that vision is that one day our nation is going to be back. It's always been there because of all of the studies and all of the papers and all of the laws that we found out have been broken. Now it tells us as Hawaiians that we have a future. We just got to go get it. So while all of this is going on, the United States of America now is into, I think this week they're going to be voting again on a TPP. And that's going to get us into a whole different level that is above <coughs> America or Hawaii or anything like that. It's going to be more of all of these world order guys. And we're going to have another layer that we have to deal with. None of us feel safe in that layer. 
So that gives us another reason as Hawaiians to push for us to get the Hawaiian nation back, which is a neutral country, back again. So the problem is, we don't vote, and we're, we're at the bottom, but we're organizing. So what we've been doing as Hawaiians is we've been spending all of our time figuring out how we're going to keep organizing and we're going to start pushing this idea that even though we have an illegal country that is in our nation, we're going to have to protect the resources that we have now because it's all disappearing faster than we can say anything. So, we're going to have, for instance, on the end of this month, on the 27th, we're having a, a large concert. We expect 8,000 to 10,000 people to be at the Shell. And we think it's going to happen. And one of the things we're going to do there is we're going to have voter registration. And we're going to be talking about the importance of voting. After the concert, we expect to make some money out of the concert. We're going to go island to island to island with all of our entertainers. And we're going to do the same thing on every single island. We're going to organize every single island. And we're going to be getting not only voter registration, but we're going to have their contacts. So anytime we have to do something really quick, we're going to be able to contact people. So during the Kahalawi days, we had the newspapers and the television. They were actually reporters back then. <laughs> Not guys who fill in the blanks. That's right. Two sides of the story, right. and no story whatsoever. We don't have those people here today. That's so right. now we have social media, which works even better. And we're getting to learn how to use social media. One of the things that has made us successful so far like the shirt that I'm wearing, it's almost becoming a brand already. And it's done by the young people. The young people that know how to talk to each other. He was a senator, and I bet you $10 that he didn't know how to talk to the young people. <laughs> I don't know how to talk to the young people. They have the language all their own, and they wouldn't even listen anyway. <laughs> so this whole generation of young people that have so much information, we now have the young people talking to themselves. And that's what's happening right now. So there's a lot of hope that this whole idea of coming together is going to work. So we need, what Hapa is doing is a more sophisticated way of organizing. It's part of the system. And the group that he's been able to get together is a very technical, well-chosen group of people that can operate and handle almost every problem that you can think of, I think. In fact, sometimes I'm sitting there after half a day and they're still going at it and analyzing it and turning it over and looking at all sides and all this kind of stuff. So, I'm really glad that I've talked about this Hapa group that, that really understands how politics really operate and I'm also part of the grassroots people who know how to talk to each other and gather and come together. So for, for myself, the message that I would like to get out there is it's time for Hawaiians and especially environmentalists to come together under the banner of Aloha Aina. That's the common ground that joins both, both sides. And to try and convince the non-Hawaiians that it's, you shouldn't be afraid of the Hawaiians. You shouldn't, because their goal is to make this a better place. They just want new tools to get there. They want to use the tools of their ancestors that allowed them to live here for 2,000 years. Proven values that allow you to live on little islands in the middle of the Pacific. Proven values. They believe in those values. These young people believe in those values. They want those values to come back. They want those values to be important values that allow us to make good decisions. So I'm going to, at that, this point, you know, 
this one white man out there. I want you to know that we're trying to bring people together. And I can stand up here all night and talk about all the things that we're trying to change or protect and all those kinds of problems that we have. And there's all kinds of problems. We just need to find the ones that we all agree upon and come together. And I know this man and myself we really believe that politics makes, especially in Hawaii, make things go or don't make things go. Make things good or make things bad. And right now we're going in a really bad direction. Really bad direction. If we don't change, the small Oahu is going to be the first one to feel the brunt. Because your spiral is a mean spiral. Some of the outside island guys, they got a chance to stop that spiral. But I don't know how you're going to stop it here. <laughs> yeah, I, I was in the freeway the other day. My God, I mean, you're going to put all these houses and add more cars and put some cement thing that makes you think it's going to solve all of this traffic problem, but it's not going to really do that. So I want to open it up to, to questions, because you know where I was trying to go, and I want to know where you're trying to go, especially if you have questions about Mauna Kea what's going on um, in the Hawaiian community, we can pick a couple questions. Um, is the Hawaiian community as enthusiastic about protecting its traditional um, farmland and Ho'opili as they are in protecting the mountain? Is that they right? are. They are, um, but it hasn't caught the imagination because nobody in Ho'opili got arrested. You know, it's still, um, you go to a hearing, you say your three minutes, you go back, nobody listens to whatever you say, it doesn't make any difference. And they come up with a position that they knew they was gonna do before you had the hearing. It's a system that doesn't really get anybody excited except the hardcore guys that think they're doing, they're gonna change the system, but it doesn't change. So it hasn't really caught on. But we all understand that in Hawaii, Food security, self-sustainability was an integral part of our, our very being. Because we didn't have any barges, we had to feed ourselves. So that's ingrained in us. So now we have a system where we don't have to feed ourselves. And that's, that's where we're at right now. But but this is traditional farmland for, for Hawaiians. Yeah, I mean, it's not all only sustainability. We can talk about our stuff, but oh, else we're here. Sorry, this is traditional farmland. It's your bread and butter for thousands of years. And is that going to catch on? And are people going to come out and stand up in the same kind of a way as this is our? It's not going to be in the same kind of a way. No. Because it's going to be pretty close, but not quite the same enthusiasm. So what you got to do is you got to have something that is going to bring everybody together. Mauna Kea, and then you, you learn what it's going to, because it's, it's almost an impossible battle right now. But it's, it's not going to be built. It's, it's not going to be built. So once, once, once we get that, that done, now you have the confidence to take on things that are in the system that you think is, the system is working with, it's not working. And you're going to be able to get outside the system and because you have unity and you have confidence, and you can start solving many of those problems. So right now we got guys out in Nanakuli, I think, once a week or so. Yeah, Mondays. Every Monday, is there. you see the signs, the whole PV, you know, save our farmlands. It's out there, but it's not like the state capital. It's out there. Yeah, there's a group starting already. Yeah, we just came from Alpha Delta, and they have statues. That's a lot of they're from so, but is somebody still chained to this? No. Um, okay, you have a question in the back? Yeah, one question. How come with your career for the moment? I know about your reawakening and
thousand. Uh, even before everything happened, there were one million to one living on this side to stay there. And there were one million Hawaiians working mostly in the uh, in the roads and in the fish. And we have lost all that. We should go back to that. Yeah. But and you know, um, I stand a man living from Costa Rica, and you know what happened in Costa Rica, what happened in Hawaii, and what happened in Texas, and what happened in the world, all the different places. So pretty much, certain ethnic group came over and took over, and then pretty much destroy everything that it was there before, because we were savages, and they knew better, and they knew how to produce, you know, richness, and they knew that uh, the concept of land cost. No. Which didn't, we didn't have, we didn't have it. The Native Americans didn't have it in America. The Hawaiians didn't have it. The landlords were, how can we have, how can we be the owner of a piece of land? Right? Um, and I'm saying all this because I'm a marine biologist and, uh, you know, when I think about sustainability, when I think uh, uh, what I see right now is, as you said, the renaissance. And this is something that I know. Renaissance of the Hawaiian culture, Hawaiian language in the younger generation. You know, we used to think, they used to say characterized millennials as, you know, uh, lazy. They want to, you know, they don't want to work, they want to stay you know, at home. And I have one hour talking to them, teaching to them, and uh, this is not good. Some of them are becoming more conscious than our generation. So, what's your question? <laughs> Okay. 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 How many of you come into the lo uh, local year uh, next Saturday to help clean it? <laughs> How many? How many of you come into Haleiwa to our fish pond to help clean it? When? Sustainability, Saturday. Eh? the 20th. Sunday, Sunday. Saturday. 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 7.30 in the morning, 8 o'clock. Saturday. Haleiwa. Haleiwa. Please. Oh, Sunday How many of you? <laughs> yeah, we like talk about sustainability. Now, my question is, how many of you coming to help us clean the fish pond? That's sustainability. That is part of GMO. That is part of our people's culture. That is part of putting this back together to show them that we are serious about saving our land and not poisoning our loi where we raise our fish, uh, our loi where we raise our kalo, our local ears where we raise our fish. Please come and help us. Nice. Uh, and please uh, tell them come here, man. Hey, sent you there. <laughs> I won't be there because I'll be in Hawaii Island <laughs> celebrating my family's family reunion. But please go in my name, please, to support me and my people, our people. Thank you very much. Right, thank you. So, you brings up a really good point. Um, please expand a little on that. Um, besides the concert that we're going to be having at the end of the month, um, you know, we are, I don't know if you drive around, you're going to see people holding signs in little groups, and they're just doing it all on their own. Nobody's organizing anything. So, what we decided to do was instead of just holding signs, we're going to organize work days. We call them Aloha Aina projects. If we're just holding the signs, I mean, it's okay. <coughs> and we're standing there waving and waving and people waving back. But nothing gets built, we don't plant anything, we don't harvest anything. So we decided to do something useful. So the first project is going to be on Saturday. And it's going to start early in the morning. And we're expecting a thousand people to come to the fish pond. And we're going to redo the walls of the fish pond at Kahana Bay. Yeah. Sunday. 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 It is Sunday. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. 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 That's our itinerary. Then from 12 to 3, we're going to head up to the Hana Valley. We're going to have Paina, we're going to have Puka Puka, and Top Star. So from 7 to 12, we're going to rebuild the fish pond at Hana Bay. Then from 12 to 3, we're going to have a 
and have entertainment, and may I, and we sit down and go for the morning and each other's home. You know, and then next Saturday, like Lincoln said, Hali, but this Sunday, Kahana. Yeah. yeah, so. How many of you guys coming on? Please come. Please come here this Sunday. This okay. Sunday. All right, and then next Sunday, next Sunday. we expect. Next Sunday, we expect between 5,000 and we're hoping for 10,000. That's, that's, that's going to be a prayer visual that's been organized by all of the hula hamaos in the state. So this is going to be something really big. And we're going to go to Waimanalo when the sun rises and do their prayers. And they're going to do prayers every hour on the hour until high noon. And at high noon, there's going to be two motorcades, one going around Makapu and the other going to the tunnels. And they're all going to converge at the University of Hawaii to say the final prayer. Wow. So this is going to be a really big day. Yeah. So we're starting off with making people work instead of just whole signs. And now we're going to do the spiritual parts to connect the mountain with all of the different islands, with the prayer vigils. And then the following week is going to be the big concert of 8,000 people at the show. So the governor has a problem, and he's going to get, become a much bigger problem. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's, 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 let's,